So in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to install and implement a Pi Hole. Uh, what a Pi Hole does, it filters out known IP addresses related to ads. So you'll be on a website and instead of getting a bunch of ads, it'll filter it out pretty much. Um, similar to Adblock, however, this filtering doesn't specifically apply to websites. It applies to everything. Uh, anything that's on the network that your Pi is configured to uh, will have its filter. Now you can specifically designate one machine or your entire network to use the Pi Hole. Um, for us, we're going to do a test. We'll implement it on just a single machine and then probably we'll move over and do our entire network to use the Pi Hole once we know it's up and working. So to start off, we need to get our Raspberry Pi configured uh, with the Raspbian OS. So if you go out to the website here, I'll have a link down below for our Raspbian Pi, or Raspbian, and we're going to use the light version here. Uh, we don't need a desktop, so we're going to hit the download zip. It'll start its download, and you also need Etcher. Etcher is going to be our SD formatter, so if you don't have that, go to this address here, link down below. Uh, download, it's a very simple install. Download it, run it, install it, and once you're done, you'll have this. Okay, so I'm going to put my SD card in here. Um, we're going to need to format it first. I like to start off with a blank format rather than formatting on top of the new image. Um, so here it is, it auto detected it. Tell it yes. This is me just sticking the card into my laptop here. Do a quick format. Alright, and that's done. And then Etcher should automatically detect it. It, it already sees we have a 16 gig SD card here. Um, and detect the image, um, but before that, we have our download here. Uh, so let's see. Where did it put it? Show and folder. There we go. So we're going to just extract here. Um, looks like we already have one there. Let's tell it yes to all. Shouldn't take too long. I'm going to guess probably about 40 seconds in total to get it all done. This is a fairly old laptop too, so years may already be done. So it's extracted, there it is, and it's in our download folder. So we'll go back over to Etcher, we're going to select our image, and our download, there it is, open. It's auto-detected our SD card, you can change it if you have more than one plugged in, or if you think it has the wrong one, and then hit flash. Now this shouldn't take too long, a um, minute or two, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video once it's running. Uh, yeah, let's get starting now. So I'm going to pause the video and come back in just a minute. Okay, so after about five minutes, the uh, flash completed. Here you'll we'll have a little flash complete, and that's it. So we're going to move over to the Raspberry Pi and continue from there. All right, next up, I'm going to go over the basic configuration for the Pi Hole. Um, I've done it already on the machine itself, but I'm going to go over how to do it again and enable SSH so PuTTY will be able to work with it. Tell it yes. So once you finish uh, or first boot up your Pi, you're going to be prompted with a login. The login is going to be Pi, and the password is going to be Raspberry. Oh, try it again. There we go. Okay, so in order to get your SSL working, which is uh, what PuTTY will use, uh, we're going to type in 
R A S P I dash T O N F I G. Oh, yeah, you're going to run a sudo in front of that. It's S U D O, then rasp.config. Go down to interface options and SSH. And then, would you like to enable it? Tell it yes. Enter. And it has been enabled. Then just press right, finish, and you're out of that menu. And then from there, you can download Putty here. And when you launch it, you're going to enter the IP address for your machine, which this one is this. You can run an ifconfig on your Raspberry Pi to get the IP address. You can check your router however you like to. So we'll hop back in it, open. back in okay and now we start the installation of the Pi hole um, we're gonna type out this C U R L space dash lower s capital s capital L space and HTTP colon oops, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash I N S T A L L dot P I dash H O L E dot net space uh, pipe, which is the vertical line space, and then B A S H. This will run the script that will install Pi Hole to our machine. So we'll press enter, and every everything worked. Uh, let's see, it looks like we ran into an issue. Oh, we didn't run as root or as our, uh, our pseudo user. Um, let's see. Okay, well, we'll wait a second and see what happens down here, if it's going to kick us out or attempt to run. Looks like it is going to attempt to run. So we'll let it go, and uh, we'll pause the video and come back. So after a minute um, or two, you'll have a pop-up installer. It's giving you a loading bar. Uh, again, it takes about a minute, and completely normal. Okay, so once the loading bar comes up, it's going to warn you that this will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. So it's just letting you know that it will configure it, and if you wish to proceed, press enter. Okay, the Pi Hole is free, but powered by donations, and it's give you a link here, so if you do enjoy the software, um, please feel free to donate to them. All right, and uh, it's going to need a static IP, warns you here, because it will be using the DNS, um, so your traffic, when it connects, will come talk to here to um, resolve that DNS, and that's pretty much how it works, and it blocks incoming DNSs and IP addresses of known uh, ad sites. Click enter. Now here, it's asking you if you want to use your Ethernet 01, or a wireless LAN option zero. If you um, if you want wireless, it's fine. I would definitely suggest using a wire connection as it is faster, and uh, adding wireless just uh, adds another layer of complexity to it. So we'll go with the wired to make sure that's starred and enter. And then now we're going to check our upstream DNS. So this is going to be who the Pi connects to for some DNS. And Google is a pretty reliable one. Feel free to switch to something else if you wish. But uh, Google, which is 8.8.8.8, .8 is very reliable. Enter on that. All right, then here is asking us where it wants us to uh, receive our ad blocking list. Um, pretty much everything is fine. Just hit enter through that. This is asking you what type of ads or what uh, IP versions do you want your ad block to use IP4, IP6, um, both are fine. So enter on that. Um, then it's asking you here uh, do you want to use your current network settings as a static IP address? So potentially, if you leave it here on uh, example here, you leave the static, and for whatever reason, if your Pi ever disconnects from your network, your network could reassign this 14 
to it and or to another device and when your Pi gets back on it it's no longer to get that 14 which will um, cause some conflict in your um, IP resolutions so it's preferred that you move it to a different spot so you could do like a 168 or a correction 192 167 1.1 1 .1. um, so that's what we're going to try and do here so we're just going to take it out of the scope actually I think if we just do a 2 here let's do 2 1 and we'll remember this 192 168 2 1 24 Then we'll hit enter, save that. Now it's asking for our default gateway, and to get that, you can run a command. So bring your command line on your machine, and just do a IP config. And if you look through here, eventually you will find your default gateway. So right here we see our default gateway of 192.168.1.1, and it appears you already had it, so simple, enter. Uh, it's going to ask us to confirm this, and yeah, we'll tell that it's good. Do you wish to install a web admin interface? Uh, yes. Do that. That way we can connect to it through the IP address from a web browser and uh, modify it as we need to. Install web server? Yes. Do you want to log, log queries? Um, you could you could turn this off. It really just depends on you. We're going to leave it on. And we'll do the show everything. Okay, looks like we, yep, there it goes. And we're just going to let that go on, and we'll come back in a minute. All right, uh, you'll have one more screen pop up at the very end. It's going to give you uh, basically your password and um, some basic information. You can hit enter and next through that. So here we'll uh, clear it out and let's do another if config, ifunfig, and so current Ethernet address is here. And if you remember, we set up the pi hole to use a uh, two. Okay, so a bit of an odd issue here. Our IP that we set up did not take, uh, we originally changed that to a 2.1, um, but it kept it the 192.168.1.14. Shouldn't be an issue. Um, we will have to go back later and figure out why that didn't change, but everything is configured correctly, so we should be able to test it out. Let's go ahead and open up a Chrome browser. Um, and make sure you already have your ad block turned off if you are running it. So you see up here we have no ad block, and let's just go to um, CNET. That's a pretty common place to see ads. We'll give it a second. There it is. Ignite big banner. Little Google ad here. I came and scroll down right now. There's so much crap popping up. Okay, so there's that. So we know CNET is uh, ad uh, intensive. Let's go ahead and close our web browser and we're going to configure our machine here to use our Pi as its DNS. To get there, uh, you're going to right click and open uh, your network settings and then we can go to Ethernet and change adapter options. That'll bring this up and we're going to go to our active Ethernet properties and then go to your IP version pro IP version 4 protocol not the 6 unless you set up 6 which I'm not if you even can yet but uh, for properties and you're going to change your preferred DNS so if you have it uh, set up automatically you're going to click use the following and we'll use our 192 address up here so 192.168.1 one four. Right, alternatively, I'm going to put back my old one. Tell okay. Close. 
and that should have saved it. So now our DNS queries will be going through the server and um, blocking everything else that we don't like. All right, so now we have uh, our web browser here, and we'll go back out to CNET and see if anything's different. Okay, we'll give it a second. You see it says advertisement up here in the corner, and we have a uh, missing link. And we come down here, we're missing that bar, and uh, scrolling is so much smoother. It's not hiccuping, it's not stuttering, it's not constantly going out to those DNS and uh, getting all that crap. So there we go. Pretty effective way. Um, now I even use an ad block. And now this should work for anything you do on this computer. Uh, if you're playing a game, um, any type of applications that run ads will be blocked while you're running it on this machine. Uh, in the next video, I will go over configuring it on your router, so your router will actually be using your Pi for its DNS, blocking everything on your network. So if you ever connect your smartphone to your network, uh, and any ads that would pop up on your games will be blocked. And, uh, so yeah, please see my next video on that. And thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Links to any tools can be found down below. Please leave a comment if these steps did or did not help you, or if you'd like to see a video on another topic. Thank you for watching.